boom, ready to roll. Good evening, everybody. It is uh, February 25th at 7.10, and uh, this is Michael James of the Noggin Network talking here with David George Brook, that gratitude guy down in Hi, Seattle. Hi, everybody. How are you doing tonight, David? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Hey, uh, things are going good. That's, that's the best report I can give you, which is a good one. As yeah. I was saying in the video today, many things in life are choices, and the right attitude is a choice, too. So I choose to have the right attitude. It's interesting when you show up with a more positive attitude in places where versus the other, huh? It sure is. And it's, it's always, I was thinking the other day, it amazes me how much we've all known people in our life that have negative attitudes. And I just wondered, how did I get a positive attitude? How did they get a negative attitude? And it's just, it's funny. It's one of those things that sometimes you, you can't necessarily trace it back to something. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's just sad. I'm so glad I've got one that looks at it half full. It's nice. So how have you been doing the last couple of weeks? I personally have been sick and had the flu two or three times now. It's just been very taxing on me. Mm -hmm. We had our first video, I believe, and now this is our second or third. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, tonight, I think, uh, you know, on my end of things, I'd like to talk a little bit about, you know, websites and social media and how that interacts. And then, you know, for yourself, you know, you can think of a topic or maybe you have a topic in mind. Um, and then at the end of this, we'll kind of go through and think of maybe one to three topics each that we'll be kind of uh, sharing some ideas or our journey on for the next show. Excellent. Excellent. I'm just probably scribbling down a couple here, too, that I'm thinking of. But well, let me start with uh, I'll start with my recap. I know you've had a couple of. Uh, uh, sickness bugs and things like that that have kind of challenged you the last couple of weeks. But I would say in the last two weeks for me, it's more than anything else has been really, and you talk about noggin branding has been uh, really focusing on my marketing. And I've noticed that as here we are, February 25th, the first uh, six or seven weeks, I guess it would be roughly that I started out that um, I've really had a much better emphasis on my marketing and it's really helping because I have about a, four maybe five pronged approach i have the um speaking that i do and so how do i market that i have the coaching that i do how do i market that uh the books that i uh, i'm working on, on a book that's part of a series i've, I've connected with some people called the um so with an organization called the six word book which is really cool and then my workshops that are also kind of go hand in hand with the book so all of those and when i think about um ways to uh, emphasize that how we can market to the people that listen to our um, podcast uh, meeting is it's really a multi-pronged approach and it's not just one thing you do all sorts of different things and I have a, a master marketing plan that is probably got for each of the speaking coaching books has probably got maybe 15 components to each situation or to each um, module if you will and so really it's gone back to that and i'm starting to see kind of some of the fruits of the labors i had a um did a talk on tuesday and then i've got another one tomorrow or day after tomorrow and the one week after next so it's been really really um really really handy and really effective rather not handy in terms of getting people to get the word out and i think it's something that maybe that i realize this i think is beneficial to would be beneficial to a lot of people and that is is that you it's always some portion of your day 20 percent, 25 30 40 percent of your hour of your day of your week and that you never stop and whether it's speaking and coaching or whether it's noggin branding whatever it's always always going to be um, something you keep going no matter how successful you get going. So you've always got to keep that funnel full. And yep. that's the big difference. That's probably been my biggest, uh, fortunately I've been healthy. I got, I got a little bit sick around Christmas, but it's been good since then. And so that's really probably the biggest thing I would say I focus on and actually having done a couple of talks as well. Hmm. So, and I, so from the last like six months of 2018 to the first, uh, it's now the end of the second month. So mm -hmm. you think by you changing up your marketing system, you've noticed a pretty big return already. Yeah, definitely, definitely seeing the difference. And it's and there's yeah. a there's a lag time of um, yeah, gosh, maybe two yeah. or three months typically that people will do. But I noticed I answered a couple emails today that were for people that were um, uh, also 
looking at latter part of 19 for talks. So sometimes it can be even a year ahead of time, but, but I've seen enough of the, it already. And it just, and what's interesting at the risk of beating myself up, I just realized that something that was a very key component and I would suggest people to consider this and that is who do you listen to mm -hmm. when you want advice? And I listened to people that didn't, weren't really doing the types of things that I was doing. And they would say, for instance, you need to charge for every single talk. You need, to, you need to charge X. You need to do this, this, and that. And I'm remembering words that were given to me years ago when somebody said to me, never take advice from somebody that isn't in a position that you want to be. And, you know, why yeah. do we go, you know, you want to uh, learn how to ride a motorcycle, you go talk to Harley Davidson. I mean, it's just, it, it makes sense that you do this. And yet I found myself listening to people almost believe in my own press. So that was something that was really helpful for me to get back to really consider, find somebody who's getting the results that you want to get and then do what they do. Mm -hmm. It seems to make sense, but I kind of got off track. So that's, that's been a huge difference just in these first, as you say, seven or eight weeks for 19. It's been a big, been a big, big, big difference. That's good. Yeah. Now, I might have mentioned in the first episode, but, you know, for me this year was a lot of it was really showing up with the intention of who I want to help and how much time I'm willing to spend. <clears throat> and so I had to sit down with a decent amount of my client base and have a very honest upfront conversation about uh, you're no longer getting me getting this deal and this amount of time and right? Mm -hmm. You're actually costing me and you're not helping me grow my business. And so I had to sit a lot of people down and say, I no longer have time to service this. Mm. I've got this thing that I'm doing and I'll be able to help, you know? And so I was able to transition and help a lot of people find their next best home to be taken care of. Um, but I had to be very honest and say, this is what I'm willing to do and what mm -hmm. I'm not. That's and for the last, you know, seven years doing the business startup, I was willing to be a little more flexible and bend and yeah, I'll do that for you. And yeah, I'll give you a killer discount. And, uh, and you know, I was always bending the palms, so to speak, to get the, the lower laying fruit on the floor. Mm -hmm. but, you know, now I step back and I just want to go focus on the big dogs. And, and that's what I've had to be able to do this year, but it's taken a lot of work. And how has that been received? Because I always think that those are tough conversations to have sometimes, but at the same time, you're having the conversation. It's not like you don't return the call or you send out a cold email or whatever. But in general, would you say people kind of understood, you know, that we went through a phase where we could work together, but now things have changed and were they understanding? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some shock and awe, but the way that I deliver it is, is very, they're very taking really show what I have done in previous months or years and then you know the value of this is still going on the day I leave mm -hmm. these guys are going to be taking it and running it mm -hmm. and so I'm still creating the bridge to success it's just Michael's not the face of it anymore mm -hmm. um, so there is some initial shock and awe but I'm always at the end I'm gaining their respect and it's 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 hard. I mean, and Michael does not want to have those conversations, but at the end of the day, they shake my hand. They give me a hug. They're actually somewhat emotional, but like, actually we get it, man. Like we oh, interesting good for you, mm -hmm. but for you to be the bigger man, to go work on your big project, you got to put your foot down and say, this is where I'm going next. Right. And that's where right. you and me, around new year's, we said, Hey man, let's pick up our marketing vehicles. Let's put it on video. Let's show people like what it takes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been sick for three weeks and now I'm like, oh man, like my strategy got totally kicked in the, you know, you know yeah. what? And now I have to readjust and like go back out and shoot some arrows. So, yeah. Well, even as we were talking offline before we started the, uh, the meeting, uh, just it's amazing how that stuff can zap you. And so your, your first obligation is to take good care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and so forth. And then once you're back to whole again, you can take these things on. Because what, what I've attempted to do in the past, and you've certainly attempted to do, it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of brain power. And, you know, there's a lot of people, you and I have talked uh, over the years, we've known each other about people that we know that just aren't that motivated. 
don't know why, but they're not. You and I clearly are. And so, but boy, you need to keep that, uh, that body in good shape because it, it's, we make a lot of demands on it. Yeah. I, uh, you know, when you're down, you really notice. And, and when you spring back, you're like, oh, I don't want to be in that spot again. So, I mean, for me, I always want to be healthy. And I've really taken some time in the last couple of years to get some, some quality care to realize what will best set me up. Mm-hmm. I've had some some real stomach issues in the past, a lot of stress and anxiety and things I'm putting on myself, but also a lot of that's kind of gut checking with the food you're eating and, you know, the mixing of things. And so I have to be cautious of how I feed myself and sleep and, you know, I got to take care because I'm running around like you a lot. We're, <laughs> we're high vibrational. <laughs> Your habits. So we have to, yeah, stop and do take care of ourselves from time to time. So, so speaking of running around like um, crazy people that you and I take great pride in, uh, what was your thought? Because I made a note of a couple of things we're going to talk about next week uh, that both of us can bring to the table. What was your thought for some, a little bit of an education piece today for the listeners? Yeah. So, you know, as you said, uh, you know, for yourself, it's, it's keeping this marketing strategy going. Mm-hmm. You and I, we've been doing business together for seven years because right. we met each other down in Linwood seven years right. ago. So the cool thing is you and I are in a position where, you know, now this year we've seen what we've done for the last six or so. This year we're totally transitioning. Right. And we're putting our foot down and we're running those marketing vehicles. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's, it's creating those social media presences with pictures and video and that storytelling process. And again, it's not just Facebook. Right. It's got to be on Twitter. It's got to be on LinkedIn. It's got to be on Instagram and YouTube because there are considerable audiences. Mm-hmm. If you show up there, you're going to maximize. Right. Right. You might, you're, you might have one channel on Instagram that is an absolute fire. And then you have this other one on Facebook that could be, you know, 50 chambers of commerce are watching that gratitude guy. Mm-hmm. They're looking to book him for the next appointment. When's his schedule open on a Thursday when I can book this guy? Exactly. Right? exactly. So there's, there's this, by us being in this constant marketing mind or world, you're going to be top of mind and you're going to be able to be seen by a lot more angles and eyes if you're on these different channels. So for me, think of the presence you want to portray. Mm-hmm. So the value I want people to walk out in 2019, think of the content you're sharing to your channel. First, is it engaging to you? Is it relevant to what you're talking about? Right. Right. Is it quality? Is it, can people notice what that is? And then does your storytelling in the, in the post creation, does it back that up? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell someone to come back in two days or three days or three hours to look at the next post coming from Noggin Branding or that gratitude guy. Right. Right. People aren't going to want to watch it. Mm-hmm. So Aging and cool, and it's going to lead to maybe in the next show. There True. might be some people that show up and follow. Right. So it's time to get those people from these channels to find you, get engaged, find it engaging or quality, and then want to keep going and continuing on. Mm-hmm. To improve with this show and somewhat your audience because your YouTube channel is way more alive than mine. Mm-hmm year of actually trying for myself right clients and have great results but on my channel i have never tried mm. that's the pivoting for me this year is i'm focusing on my marketing channel mm-hmm. clients, which is the last seven years mm-hmm. there's just my channels just the the seven or eight not eating for the other people so i just now i get to focus my approach where before I was buckshotting it for my clients. Right. For clients, and I had to think dentist, insurance, auto glass, and hotels, and restaurants, and whatever else. Now I just think, 
And so now that content creation is more creative. It's more fun. It's not as stressful. It comes to me more organically, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And I can then think of how I want to chop that content up and share it over a week or a month or a year. Right. Kind of so that's, that would be kind of my takeaway for this social media aspect. That's and good. Continue that, I would say next week, I would talk about how to build communities, like engaging actual communities. Okay. And speaking to those communities. And then like, again, that content, that constant content push, that consistency showing up as your ideal theme, so to speak. Excellent. And I will tell you, and then I'm going to, mm -hmm. in about five minutes, we're going to leave the group with what we'll discuss next week, which will both be, uh, I think we'll both have a subject and I think it'll be very beneficial to the listeners. Um, one of the things that you just talked about that I've really noticed is that everybody wants an ROI. I mean, that's just one of those classic acronyms about, well, I know what's my return on investment and so on. And one of the things I've noticed is that the different channels that I do, the different methods that reaching the, the, the group, uh, the followers, if you will, you just never know where something's going to come from. And as a result of that, or as an example of that, uh, about a month or so ago, I got a um, request for a gratitude journal from a gal in Great Britain. And, and I just kind of went, and, and here's her name with all those different letters, you know, and the, and the address I sent it to her that's our like zip code that she says, can you send me a gratitude journal and, you know, I watch your videos or something. So that cool. was really cool. And now how did I get her? I don't know. And you can't go back and figure out the ROI. You just have to get enough marketing pieces out there. And then there's not many people I know that know marketing as well as you do. So it's out to all these different vehicles. And then today was being in Seattle, Washington was one of those, the Monday morning video went out this morning and I always get a lot of response back to it. And here was one, uh, dear David, uh, I so appreciate your videos. I watch remember I love it when it was the one minute format. It's just about all the time I've got in the morning and so forth. And it was so-and-so and he was with a law firm in some Mecklenburg, such and such Pennsylvania. There you go. And I thought, that's interesting. That's cool. And so you get more and more, and there's a global reach or a national reach or international reach. Well, what's the answer to that? How did that happen? It's just by doing it consistently and finding all these different marketing vehicles and stuff too. So, so well, let's, let's do this. Let's, we'll wrap up here in a minute or two. I'll tell you what, um, I'm going to have you reiterate what you just said about um, building communities just a little bit. In fact, why don't you do that first, and then I'm going to wrap up with mine, and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap up for this week. So for next week. Yeah. So for next week, you know, take what I just said, where when you're now going out 2019 onto your social media channels and you've created your brand and your look and, and identity, um, it's, it's then finding those communities on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Pinterest that you can engage with and then keep a consistent conversation going and that consistency in, in that content marketing. Where when you step into, say, the gratitude community, there's only so many people speaking about certain topics or, you know, maybe business things, personal things, relational things. Uh, spiritual things, you know, whatever financial things um, around gratitude. But, you know, then there's, there's, so there's the buckshot approach, there's then all these niche approach. And so the communities comes into play where, you know, once you've created that brand or that identity and look and feel that that gratitude guy or noggin branding is looking for, then it's finding the communities to jump into, engage, right. building. Because those communities, they're all over and they're on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. And, but it's how do you get them bigger, yeah. right? Everybody's like the ROI. Mm -hmm. Well, what is, how much ROI have you spent in building the groups, right? Yeah. So like, right. have you spent 20 minutes or 10 years, right? right. So Oprah, Rush, her book club, the reason there's a million people is because she's been talking about it for 20 exactly. years. Exactly. She just well, had a TV show. Right. Every friggin' day to talk about it to get a million people to sign up. 
Oh, that's She's a great. Got to put so much money into it and pay people to come onto her show. She's exactly. got to give away free books out the gazoo to get a million to buy. Now, that's a great point because it really is um, like a bunch of bricks to the brick wall. There's there's so many thousands and thousands of bricks and then it becomes a brick wall. I remember I once, I don't know if I still have it, but I had a two by four. that was a piece of wood, two by four on this end. And you flipped it over and it was 984 toothpicks on the other side. And I said, huh. so is it two by four or is it 984 toothpicks? So, so, but that's, that's a great point. And it ties in nicely to what I want to talk about. And that's kind of the communication with your tribe. And, and what are those vehicles? Now, yes, as we just finished saying, there's many, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the email marketing piece, the speaking piece, the video piece, the video, the weekly consistent video that I do with the uh, one minute uh, Monday morning minute as an example and lead magnets and things like that. Just the different ways that you, you communicate, because as you just said with Oprah, that was a great example. It's not one big thing. It's doing this consistently every single day. And it's the book club and it's all those things. And I think that what's, what's interesting to me, people are always looking for the magic, a pill or the magic bullet or whatever it is and it's just just tell me the one big thing well mm -hmm. there's a few exceptions a few a few areas but for the most part it doesn't work that way it's a, it's 924 toothpicks instead of a two by four and you got to just keep doing them and people always want to know what's that one that can get that's going to make it easy well if it was easy everybody would do it so anyway so well that's great well let's um we'll wrap up for this week um next week michael will be talking as, as he just mentioned about building communities and then i'm going to talk about as i say communications with your tribe with your group with your followers with your listeners and how you build that and the ways you build that kind of loyalty over time so mm -hmm. um michael any final thoughts for the group as we wrap up wrap up for this week yeah i think you know as you're kind of thinking about all this don't stress about it have fun look at some people that you maybe look up to online and mm -hmm. see what they're doing great tip i use the term reverse engineer people mm -hmm. where you're looking at their facebook and their instagram and their website and you're trying to understand who they are what they're selling and the value involved right right they got a million people on youtube following them why is that yeah, exactly. I sit there and I break that down and I try and look at the content and the videos and everything that they've put out. I try and understand what those pieces took, the puzzle, to get to that, that ending board game. Excellent. They've Excellent. got that professional aspect and I want to try and understand how to get there and make it better or in my own way. Excellent. And what I would add would be just be thinking about, to our listeners, be thinking about what your message is. And what is it that you want to get out? We can tell you how to do it. But as you said earlier, if you don't have a message that I'm extremely passionate about the, the whole subject of gratitude and it's a choice and so forth, but uh, really be thinking about what your message is. We'll tell you how, how you can get it out to the people, but what is that message? Preferably you're very passionate about it. And what are some of the things that you know that you can then in turn educate other people on around your subject and therefore we'll show you the methods and the vehicles to get it out there. So, yeah. so that's for next time. So everybody, thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, David. And, uh, I'm happy that you're feeling better. And yeah. uh, we thank you all for tuning in this week of the uh, February 25th edition of the Michael and David show. And we'll talk to you next week. Take care. Have a great night. Thanks, David. Mm -hmm.